Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to talk to you about the not so secret weapon against mites and mildew on your plants. That is sulfur. And I say the not so secret weapon because it is in fact the oldest known pesticide to humans in human history. Uh, one of the names that carried forward from that time was brimstone. You may have heard of that. The Romans used it or burned it to fumigate houses against pests, but it's been noted as a fungicide, an effective fungicide since the 1800s. Of course, these days it doesn't get as much attention even as adding eggshells to the garden. So I want to remedy that in this video. Let's look at the different forms and how they're used in the garden and greenhouse. The form of sulfur we're going to talk about today is elemental sulfur. That's this bright yellow stuff. Elemental sulfur just means it's not combined with any other organic or inorganic compounds. Those are the ones that usually kind of have a scent to them, smell like rotten eggs. This actually doesn't. Now this form of it in the little prill here is not very convenient for application for the home gardener. So what they've done is they've ground it up into a microfine powder that can just be suspended into water. That's this form here. The dosing that you use for that is one tablespoon per liter. And as for the Americans who are following along because you don't use liters so much, this is a half gallon sprayer and about a liter is about half of this half gallon. So it's a, it's a quarter of a gallon of water with one tablespoon of sulfur in it. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of sulfur powder as applied as a spray. So first of all, it is highly effective against powdery mildew, rusts and smuts, as goes to other foliar fungus it may not be quite as effective, certainly as a preventive it may do well, but it isn't gonna knock down a large scale infection of black spot as a for instance. Uh, second thing to say is that it is safe compared to the alternatives. If you're talking about the chemical fungicides that you may use, those can uh, be the kind of thing that you have to wear protective equipment for. This you don't because it's relatively harmless towards animals. That is, if you have uh, pets, you have kids, and you're worried about what you're spraying in the garden, this is relatively safe for animals. Uh, the next thing I'll say is the safety on the plants themselves. It is on, on its own a very safe product to use on plants. Don't use it when it's extremely hot and don't combine it with oil based products. If you combine it with neem oil or horticultural oil that will uh, amplify the phytotoxic effects of those oils and it will cause burn on the leaves of your plants. Uh, finally, when it comes to beneficial insects, also fairly harmless. Uh, the, again, one proviso on that is it does have a special effect against mites. So your spider mites will be knocked down by that, which is good news. But if you're using predatory mites, this would also knock down the population of predatory mites. So uh, buyer beware on that. Uh, in terms of fungicide resistance, sulfur has a good record of not developing a ton of fungicide resistance. So I certainly wouldn't start applying it you know, every day, every second day, every third day. I would look for times when the disease pressure is high and then use it as a knockdown for powdery mildew. Uh, but in general, they haven't observed much resistance towards uh, of the fungus towards the, uh, the application of, of the sulfur. Next thing I'll talk about is that if you're using it as a spray, I, I would like to shake it as I'm spraying just to keep it suspended. I'm not sure that's exactly uh, necessary. Uh, a little dot of soap will also help to keep it spreading on the leaves of your plants. It does leave a residue, and this is something my wife doesn't like so much because she's like, hey, we're trying to get rid of the look of powdery mildew. When this stuff dries on the leaves, it kind of looks like powdery mildew, but it isn't a disease. So if you look closely, you can tell the difference. And uh, if it's just being applied in my case like now it's winter or into the fall I don't need my plants to look great I just need to keep the mildew off of them as they are closed into the greenhouse for the winter here uh, out in the landscape you know try it out see if you can live with the look of it but it does ha uh, add a kind of a powdery or whitish uh, you know liquid residue or spray residue onto your leaves now what about the overspray what if this sulfur doesn't land on the leaves or washes off the leaves and goes into the soil. Well, the answer to that is sulfur is actually a plant nutrient on its own. And once it reacts in the soil, it becomes bioavailable to the plant. So it's really no problem if the sulfur gets down into the soil. In fact, it is used widely as a soil amendment. 
this form here, which is a little bit less pure, this is a 95% sulfur, is often used to acidify soil. I made a video on how to neutralize wood ash if you add it to your garden. This is the stuff I used for that purpose. And once again, it breaks down into a harmless plant nutrient. Don't obviously overuse it, uh, but because that would make the soil salty and, and stop the plant from being able to take up nutrients. But as a you know, overspray or as a minor soil additive, uh, harmless entirely. Really quickly now, I want to talk about an alternate way of applying the sulfur, and that's using it as a fumigant in a burner like this. Remember the ancient Romans used it almost in exactly this way, and what it does is it volatilizes into the air and knocks down all of the free spores and the spider mites and sort of covers the entire inside of the greenhouse all in one shot. Certainly I think the cannabis growers use this in their grow rooms as well. You have to be a little careful because during that stage that it's been volatilized and it's burned in the air, it could be irritating to your lungs if you were in that space. So usually people will burn this at night and, uh, and then just air it out in the morning before they go into the greenhouse. I usually run it in a greenhouse like this for three or four hours. Uh, that's based on the manufacturer's instructions, but you may actually have to, uh, based on the size of your room, vary the burning time. So the other thing to say about that is it uses a very, very small amount of sulfur. I mean, it's just minuscule and it does not leave that residue on the plants. So it's a great way of using a small amount of sulfur to get a big effect and you don't have to go around spraying things and you don't end up with that spray residue, but it's more for the inside of a grow room or a greenhouse like this. All right, I hope that answered any of your questions about sulfur. Uh, certainly, if you have any questions, drop those into the comments below. We can have a good conversation about it. Thanks again for watching.